Hey guys, this build I'm working on some gates for my parents. There's two big double gates and then one man gate. The man gate is going to be eight feet wide, eight feet tall, or a little bit narrower than eight feet wide. Uh, here is the steel. There's one more bar of this two by three square tube, 120 wall, uh, in the shop, about to be cut up. But this is all for the man gate. So the layout of this in general is a basic rectangular frame, eight feet tall, 82 inches wide. These are half inch square tube, uh, 16th wall. And I have 16 bars of these. Each bar is 20 foot long. That's a standard size. So it's gonna have a basic frame made out of this. These bars are gonna be three inches apart, vertical. And then this flat bar is going to be used as a support for the middle going across horizontally in the middle, basically split the difference. And it'll kind of keep these rigid, keep them from moving around too much. So this isn't like a security gate. It's uh, pretty light tubing for, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, somebody could rip it off if they hooked a, a truck to it. So it's not as heavy duty as I normally make my stuff, but it's uh, supposed to be kind of a nice, nice gate, kind of a wrought iron look and I'm probably gonna make some sort of uh, nice emblem embossed kind of thing in the middle, um, maybe with um, a gear or um, a decorative cursive D cut out of plate or something like that. D for Dawes, our name. So, come up with something. So, a little bit different build than usual, but uh, some of you may enjoy it. All right, now those are cut, but now I need to cut the angles. I always cut them straight first at 90 degrees, even if I need to do a 45 later, because then I can measure them a little bit more accurately and consistently, because it's difficult to measure a 45 degree angle from a 45 degree angle on a saw like this. Now that those are cut, I can clean them up and weld the frame together. Alright, so here's where I'm building the majority of it. Fun part, getting everything square. Or what I should say is getting it square and keeping it square throughout the entire process. Because when you're welding, things don't tend to stay square. If you've never welded before, you don't know what I mean. I have these two corners square, relatively square, that is. Those two corners are not yet, but if I clamp those, it could get these two out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tack the outside corners of these two. That way, it can still flex and pivot this direction, but it's not going to get so far out of square that I have to reclamp it.
anyone's wondering, this is how you make frames for planters too. If you were wondering. Okay, so here's how you make sure a big frame like this is square. You measure from one corner across to the other corner. This is 126 and 3 8 And then you measure the other way from the next corner across. And if they're the same, which they are almost perfectly, then the, then the frame is square. Now that I have it all tacked, this is where pulling comes in. As I said before, if you're a welder, you don't know what I'm talking about. Well, here's what I'm talking about. If I were to weld the inside corners of this frame, if I weld this one, when the metal cools, it contracts. And so it would squeeze these together and push the whole thing out of square. If I were to weld the outside edge, it wouldn't do it quite as much because there's not as much for it to grab onto. Whereas the inside, there's those walls. The outside, it won't grab as much. And so it would pull it out this way, but not as badly as inward. So how you counteract that is you weld the top and the bottom first because it really can't pull it up and down. And even if it does, weld the next one will counteract it. Now you might say, if I weld the inside of this one and then go and weld the inside of that one, they'll both pull in the same direction, and so it should counteract it, correct? It would if you weld them both at the exact same time. However, you weld this one first and it pulls, and then you weld this one, there's already stress on the frame, and so it won't pull as much. And so it's really hard to counteract that because you would have to weld all four corners at the exact same time. So I'm not gonna do that. I am, however, gonna attack the rest of these first. I'm gonna try something new with this welding so that maybe you guys can actually see the weld. I'm gonna put a dark shield in front of my camera. That way maybe the brightness won't overpower it and you'll actually be able to see the weld itself. Now to weld in my support bars for the vertical bars. These are going horizontally. This is the top of the gate right there, or that is. One of these is the top. So there's gonna be this bar, and then there's gonna be a bar here also. They're 16 inches apart. And then in the middle, there's going to be a decorative something. I haven't decided yet. Almost decent. Here's how my hinges are working. So a piece of three-quarter, three-quarter bolt, a hardened washer as a wear surface, the hinge middle. Another washer, the other side, and then a nut on this side. If I can get it on. So this is getting welded. One down here, centered on that mark. Then one at the top, centered on that mark. This piece of DOM tube is going to have a piece of all thread welded onto it, about a foot long. And then a nut threaded all the way down it with a washer, and then on the other end is another washer and another nut. That way it can go through the wooden post that this is mounting on, and then you can adjust how far it sits on the post. That way you can level the gate if the posts are not level.
This will get drilled and then it will screw into the wooden post that's on the latch side and act as a deadbolt. And then we can just put a padlock on this to keep it from opening. Okay, so you're in going in first. Yep, 